Well, hey, besties, you caught me having lunch in Vietnam. And before we get to this video, I want to say a huge thank you to our sponsor, BetterHelp. Life has a way of surprising us with unexpected challenges. Whether you're grappling with the pressures of daily life or facing deep personal struggles, it's important to recognize that seeking help is a sign of strength. In my 20s, I went face to face with a lot of negative emotions. But fortunately, I realized the significance of not letting that time period define me. Seeking guidance became an essential step forward for my well being. And that is why I believe so much in today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is dedicated to making therapy more affordable and accessible. Finding a good therapist can feel like a chore, especially if you're limited to only the therapist in your area. But that's where BetterHelp comes in. Their online platform boasts an extensive network of licensed therapists who are committed to supporting you during your life's challenges. To get started, just answer a few questions and they'll pair you up with a licensed therapist who's a perfect match for you. If you're going through a tough time or maybe you just need a fresh perspective, BetterHelp has your back. By clicking the link in the description or visiting betterhelp.com slash besteverfood, you'll get 10% off your first month. If you want to change your therapist at any time, no worries. BetterHelp lets you switch therapists hassle-free without any extra costs or insurance stress. So what are you waiting for? If you've been putting off therapy, now is the time. To get started, just go to betterhelp.com slash besteverfood. Now, I'm going to eat my lunch, and you can watch this video. In this video, we're traveling to a remote Hmong village in Laos to take part in a feast of epic proportions, including freshly sacrificed buffalo cooked up in an American missile. These are mortars left over from the war here. Some of them just don't blow up. But first, let's back up. Journeying with me in Laos, Hmong American chef Yia Vang. His parents braved treacherous odds, escaping this very land, only to find sanctuary in a Thai refugee camp. My parents met there in like 78 in Vinai in the refugee camp. Yia, born amidst the turmoil of the camp, eventually found his way to the USA. Now, in a return to the land his parents intimately ah, knew, Yia will experience a homecoming. Oh, oh my god. Wow! Draped in Hmong colors with an entire village joining in to create a massive meal that will feed dozens. Right here we have lungs and a freaking trachea. Take a look at this. Including some Hmong food offerings I've never seen before. Oh no. Are those roots or mice? Uh, yes. But before we dive in, he has been tasked with the very labor-intensive first course, purple pounded sticky rice. The Hmong word is called yua, but it's almost like a mochi. This dish begins with sticky rice that's already been steamed, then dumped into a wooden vessel where it'll undergo an intense physical transformation. So what we're doing is we're incorporating all the rice in together. Most people might think that this is a strength thing, but it's actually a technique. And the gentleman behind me is just giving me critique and saying, you're not doing it right. <laughs> Here, hours from the next big city, deep in the countryside, you'll find a village known as Banta. Sabadi. A place very close to where Ye's mother grew up. This part of Laos holds the key to Ye's heritage. So we're gonna start pounding it. It's one at a time. Come <sighs> on. Yeah, oh, so I'm like out of breath here. Man, with the mixer, you gotta just turn it on. This, oh my gosh, is a great cardio workout. Oh, the old guy is bolsing. Oh, he lives in America. He must rest too much. Can't keep up. Yep. After Yia has finished sprinkling his sweat and tears into our dinner, the sticky rice can be portioned by the village women prevent this purple mass from sticking, they cleverly apply boiled egg yolks to their fingers. Wrap the contents using galangal leaf. The pounded rice can be eaten like this, or you can add another flavored dimension, tossing it over fire and toasting the outside. There's no ah, uh, it's just nya zhong. Would you, I heard an ah. Uh. Well, that's more Hmong, just say nya zhong. But I want to be Hmong now. Nah, just say nya zhong. It's my second day being- Say nya zhong. Nya zhong. Nya zhong. Mm. We're accompanied by the village chief, Zhong Jia, and his wife, Yao Yao. I'm so happy and excited to be here. This is our final video, and we've taken such a, a long journey to reach this village, and it's absolutely worth it. How do you feel? I feel great. Coming in, watching them make this, and being part of making it. Dude, it's just like, oh man, we make this at home. But just a few more different technical stuff. So what's fascinating to me is, a couple years ago, I was in Vietnam in the Northwest, and I met some Hmong folks there, and they made the same dish in almost exactly the same way. Yep. It was the purple rice, it was the big hammers, it was the egg yolk on the hands yep. to make sure that the Hmong mochi doesn't stick to your hands, all of that. But when you open it up, <laughs> you're good. Cool. <laughs> some parts are a little bit charred, some are still gooey. Yeah. There's just a mixture of textures here. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. For me, like growing up, this was always a treat. Mm -hmm. You know, this is your snack. I don't know what else to compare the soft bits to except for mochi. Mm -hmm. And then we have kind of a dipping sauce yep. here as well. Focaccia. Sugar cane. Think uh, from where we come from, maple syrup, but with sugar cane. Oh, um, can I tell you? <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't have that last time. I had like a spicy dipping oh, sauce last okay. time. That's good though, right? Oh, that steps it up. I feel like my dopamine center is just blew up. You are the chief of the village, is that correct? Yeah, man. Now, is that an elected position? How does one become a chief? Yeah. They kind of have a little election, no vote, village consensus. And what are the responsibilities of the chief? That's okay. Basically, it's taking care of the welfare of the village, making sure that there's equality, if there's any problem or anything in the village, you know, he helps with the decision making. This was an amazing meal. Tomorrow we have a big event, an event in your honor. We could call it a homecoming of sorts. <laughs> are you the king or the queen if we're doing homecoming? Oh, yeah, not that kind of homecoming. <laughs> oh. Early tomorrow morning, an entire buffalo will be sacrificed and used to make a long list of Hmong dishes. Yia's mother's cousin is joining the feast, and Yia has no idea she's coming. Are you serious? Yeah. Today, the village chief's house will become the epicenter for this homecoming event. All right, good morning, my man. Morning, dude. An important ceremony will and must be conducted inside their house before the cooking process can begin. Uh, but first, an early morning welcome drink. Oh, this is my kind of introduction. Booze, and it definitely does not taste important. I just want to know that it's 8, 19 a.m. Absolutely. These are my kind of people. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> That's one hell of a way to start the day. Oh, it is. Oh, you uh, oh, get two of them. Holy <laughs> cow. Here we go. I'm going to take a nap after this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> An altar is piled with specimens of varying value and meaning, including two live chickens. This ceremony pays homage to the buffalo sacrifice while simultaneously bestowing blessings upon the homeowner. He's gonna drink this now to call the spirits. The Hmong religion for many embraces animism and the village shaman is the healing practitioner serving as a guide between the spirit world and the real one we're sitting in right now. I mean, yeah, it makes me want to be a yeah. shaman. He starts out with a double shot of beer. Sponsored by Beer Law. <laughs> <laughs> buffalo horn tips are thrown to the ground to determine which way the soul has gone. When the souls are believed to have entered the house, drinks are shared among the participants as a sign of welcoming. Bro, warm beer, bro. Oh. Offerings are presented to the house owners, symbolizing the unity of their souls and bodies as one entity. I'm saying thank you for honoring us, thank you for blessing us. As a result, two chickens are chosen for sacrifice. Their souls serve as a blessing, supporting the bond between the hosts and the spiritual realm. With today's first ceremony complete, it's time for the buffalo sacrifice. The buffalo holds a prominent place in Hmong culture, often portrayed in Hmong art and textiles. They're crucial for farming and plowing fields, so the slaughter of an animal such as this only happens on special occasions. Um. That's a first for me. Oh, really? They just sever the spine immediately yeah. with an axe. Yep. My question is, is it just different depending on the village you go, you think? Yeah, definitely. Geographical isolation has led to diverse practices among the several Hmong subgroups. Regardless, one fact remains that binds all Hmong together. The art of resourcefulness and letting nothing go to waste. The blood, the hooves, the organs, the skin. Everything but its last breath. <laughs> This guy's getting everyone drunk. <laughs> While everyone is getting their hands dirty, other villagers play a more supportive role. So this is his way of saying cheers, and he's going to drink to everyone working together. Cheers. Oh, it's allowed to pour a drink for yourself? Because everyone's working, and they can't drink. So he's going to you know, pour it for himself. Bottoms up, buddy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's real strong. Oh, thank you. Is this some beef? It's still moving. Now, I'm all for surprise shots, but this... This is not what I was expecting. Yeah, Stay yeah. tart, tart, buddy. Yeah. It's still warm, bro. <laughs> it's still warm. Shaman says great, great, great. Very good. <laughs> I've never had meat that fresh. It was still pulsating in my hand. That's wild. Oh, it's a meat taste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Feast preparations are in full swing, with different parts of the buffalo being delivered to kitchens scattered across the village. Each fire team takes responsibility for cooking one specific dish. Eager hands meticulously break down the animal even further, depending on the dish it's destined for. 
but during this culinary choreography, one particular part of the buffalo I get to cook with the villagers today. takes a different path. Look at this thing, super fresh. It was just beating literally like an hour ago. Is this guy doing a cooking show in my show? What is this, Food Network? We should go right into the heart, carve this bad boy out. Probably not gonna use this whole thing. Chef Yi's culinary training started as a child, observing and tasting the traditional Hmong recipes his parents whipped together at home while living in the USA. You know what the one thing about cooking fresh meat is? It's still warm, you know? <laughs> now, even as a restaurant tour, tenderize it. Yeah, may be facing his most challenging audience yet. One man from this village who has known nothing but Hmong food from the time he was born. Next thing we're gonna do, make our little marinade paste. Got some garlic here. Ooh, throw some lemongrass in there, some shallots, chilies, MSG. And then we're gonna make this into a little mash. Yeah, that's beautiful. Fish sauce in there. Put it right into here. Make sure it's coated really well. Grab our skewers. Oh, this is the perfect snack. <laughs> and this is an ode to the Minnesota State Fair, everything on a stick. So you have cooked probably for thousands of people, at least in your life, but this is gonna be your first time cooking for a Hmong person in Laos. And I'm nervous because of the way that we cook in America. Hmong food is a little different than here in the mountains. I wanna see this guy's reaction. Let's go for it. Mmm, oh. Mm. Yeah. 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 I asked him, I said, hey, is it really good or are you just being nice? And he's like, no, it's really good. Oh, this is delicious. It's so meaty, it's so tender, and it's so key the way you cooked it, because just visually, I would have been tempted to cook it more when you bite into it. It's so juicy. Has he had this version of heart before? <laughs> First time like this. Cool. What do they usually do with the heart? <laughs> they would steam it or braise it. Right on, that's awesome. Man, that's so exciting. I want to ask you more about your cooking history. When did you first start cooking? I mean, like every Hmong kid grows up cooking, right? You're, you're part of the help. Around this village, we see it's like all the little kids, they're all helping. But I think like professionally, 16, 17, I started working in kitchens and I never really wanted to do it because I always just thought that, oh, this is not something I want to do, it's so hard. But it was probably not until like 10, 12 years ago. Was there a moment when you decided, I want to be a chef, this is what I want to do? I don't think that I really had a moment where it was like, hey, I want to be a chef, I want to be a cook. I got really deep into it and I'm like, well, this is the way. <laughs> Today's main course begins with a tantalizing soup, then a sizzling stir fry of buffalo meat and a pot brimming with buffalo organs, along with every other last little bit of that colossal animal. When it comes to the idea of preserving Hmong culture, where does cooking fit into that? Our food is our story. It's our cultural DNA. And so to know our people, you have to know our food first because all our stories of who we are, where we've been, is in our food. This is absolutely a first for me. Are these missiles? Oh, these are mortars left over from the war here. These were dropped from airplanes and some of them just don't blow up. This is a mortar that we decommissioned and broke down and now we're using it as our stove. During the Vietnam War, Laos suffered in silence as the US military covertly bombed its land for over a decade. The relentless bombings aimed to disrupt the supply routes of the North Vietnam communists, turning Laos into the most heavily bombed country per capita in the history of warfare. So the biggest issues that we have in Laos is children going around playing and they find one of these things and it looks like a toy for them. And that's how many children either lose limb or die. Though better late than never, the USA has been assisting the Laos government in removing unexploded ordinances that still exist in this land. Before we get back to cooking, we'll sample a dish that requires no heat at all, raw buffalo lard. Made with raw cuts of meat, raw cuts of liver, and one special ingredient to blend them all together. Buffalo bile juice, extracted straight from the bile sac. Add MSG, rice powder, coriander, chilies, ground pepper, and mint. What's missing now is like the beer and the booze, because now is when I could really use it. Oh, oh my gosh. Mm. Wow! That's a hard one. One thing I can say about Hmong folks, especially here, they do not make bland food. Mm -mm. The bile, it's like putting a battery on your tongue. Yes, you get that numbing sensation. It feels electric. What do you think of this? I'm good. That's it. Good. It's really strong for me, man. This is woof, potent. Please. Watch out, watch out. He says thank you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. No, watch out, watch out. Joining us again, our shaman friend. <laughs> and Mr. Kamar Song. Thank you so much for providing the buffalo. Oh, yeah. And he said that to see the full effect of the village, it's during the New Year's, but now everyone's got something to do today. Absolutely. You know, I wanted to speak to you just from your experience, from the time you were much younger until now. How have you seen this place change? Hanaya. 
said when he started out as a boy here in 62, there were only five families in this village. There was no trails here, there was nothing, but now there are roads that cars can come here. They have electricity here and they can harvest, they can garden, they can do all these different things. <laughs> From his generation to the next younger generation are some of those traditions fading or disappearing. Some of the basic traditions that we've experienced today, they've held on to really tight. But then there are some things where it's just wrong and those we can let go. He says back in his day, if a man wanted a woman and said, hey, you're pretty, I want you, you just grab her arm and say, you're coming with me. But they don't do that anymore. I miss those days. <laughs> this morning's sacred beer-fueled ceremony was only the first among many. Now, the village chief invites his ancestral spirits to drop by the house. Empty chairs stand as seats for the visiting spirits, while the offerings are symbolically served as a sign of gratitude and respect for those who have passed. But life is also for the living. Okay, so we're coming over here. Yeah, got it. Okay. So, super grateful you're here. And I know that if I've learned anything from Hmong people, whether it's in Minnesota or here, it's that the Hmong culture is so much about family. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to get in contact with your mom's cousin. Are you being serious right now? And bring her here. Are you being serious right now? To join us for today's meal. Oh, Nyeong Ah. Nyeong Mr. Nao Young, along with his wife, Miss Fowa. He's tall, huh? <laughs> After the war, countless Hmong families were split up for many reasons. Some opted to relocate to other countries, while others resiliently stayed behind, determined to rebuild their lives with whatever remained. Yi's cousins chose to stay, while the rest of his family sought a new beginning in the USA. In that time of war, when families split up, like if one of the fathers passed away or something, the other family would just bring that family in to be them. So it's cousins, but they see it as sisters. With a successful reunion accomplished, only two dishes remain before the village meal can begin. In a giant pot, chunks of buffalo meat and bones, both large and small, simmer together. But the secret to this one particular dish lies in the buffalo blood, imparting its own unique flavors. Add salt, MSG, passion fruit leaves, and leave it to simmer for hours. In a separate cooking pan, a new dish takes form, beginning with the sizzle of oil and garlic, followed by a generous portion of bite-sized buffalo meat slices. Fry them to perfection, infusing the flavors with salt, onion, MSG, ginger, and fragrant lemongrass. Thank you so much for joining us. So excited that everything happened so perfectly. The, the enthusiasm in this village is wild. It's electric, you can feel it in the air. Well, first of all, people have been drinking since 9 a.m. and that always helps. Luckily, it's only 2.49 right now. We're eating and drinking at very odd hours today. Here we have the stir fry. Yep. Mm. This stir fry is incredible. It's very lean, and so it's not intrinsically soft. That's why it's important, I think, to get a perfect thin slice yeah. so you can still get through it. And then you just chomp into these veggies that release so much fragrance. That herb, it really mellows out the gaminess, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. right? We don't mm. Oh, no. What? Are those roots or mice? Yeah. Yes. It's roots. They said that this will make you strong. Cool. How is it? Good. <laughs> Finally, we've got this right here. This is the broth. This is that big cauldron that was being cooked on that mortar. Oh, and so this is part of the spine right here. Yep. Oh, or the, huh? What part is that? Some kind of a tubing. I feel like that we should have put that back in. Look at this. This is like a piece of a hip bone, maybe? Oh, you can peel it right off. Oh, there you go. Oh and my. it's tender. I love it. Mm. As a kid, my favorite thing was to grab all the bones from the stock and just put a big bowl and just chip at it with a bowl of rice and some hot pepper. Oh, that sounds yeah. delightful. Every bite has a little bit different personality here. Some of the fats and connective tissues have rendered down. They become a little bit softer. Yeah. Some parts are a bit chewy still, but it's packed with flavor. He wants to know if American people likes this kind of food. What would you say? Probably not the majority of them. It would depend on which thing you're talking about. Because we have like beef stews and stuff like that. But like nobody wants to eat it off the bone though. No, I couldn't see that happening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I've been in Asia too long. Have they been to the U.S.? Haven't. What's your impression of what Americans are usually eating? Oh, southern show. Most of what they've known of American food is from YouTube. He hasn't been to America, but he's been to France. So he's thinking that a lot of American food revolves around bread, cakes, you know, pastries. Uh, in many ways, he's correct. Yes. <laughs> 
for you, looking at this story from your father to where you're at now, your father came from here, your mother came from here. They made unimaginable sacrifices. Eventually, he moved to the USA along with you. And when we're talking about preservation of culture and tradition, it's just like he never could have imagined that those actions back then would culminate in you opening your own restaurant, going on shows like mine, on TV, being able to share this small piece of culture, this culture that could have easily have just been left and isolated in these mountains. That is being shared worldwide now. Through our food, our platforms, our media, or whatever, we get to keep sharing our parents' story. And that's what really excites me, man. Like, we could have done this show from Minneapolis. You know, we have. Totally different. When my feet is on the same dirt that my parents call home. A home that they might not be able to come back to. For you, where do you want to see Hmong cuisine in the future? I want the next generation of Hmong chefs and cooks to take that and they put their own story on it. And I really learned in the last 38 years, what it really means to be Hmong is one generation gives up a piece of themselves so that the next generation can take that and put a little bit in for the next generation. I'm so happy you accepted my invitation and I'm so happy we could travel Laos together and have this experience and I could see this country through your eyes. My mind is kind of blown. Probably six months from now, I'll finally just process all of this. Oh, absolutely. Hey. Thank you so much, brother. Thanks for having me. Elevate your style with our brand new clothing collection. Rock out in our threads, feel the thrill of culinary adventures, and celebrate with us in style. Head on over to Beffers.shop today. We have maple trees? Yeah, dude, they, there's a huge maple syrup thing up in northern Minnesota. Oh, I know that. You gotta learn about your people. I should, one, you should one do, day. You should do a show going back to St. Cloud. I'll do a pilgrimage. Yeah, back to St. Cloud. <laughs> What do you say? My mom and my dad showed them your videos. Oh. They're fanboying, fangirling out right now. So Thank you. They're very happy to meet you. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm actually really excited to see how they kill this thing. Oh, do you want to help? I mean, I'll help <laughs> by watching. Yeah, by watching, by standing there. If you can see the camera, the camera can see you. So just make sure that you're not within view. And we're about to begin in five, four, three, two. I've been cut into my own heart before. Yeah, you girls know which one, which one you did it. <laughs> okay. Boom, that is the end of video five and the end of our journey here in the country of Laos. Yeah, what'd you think? It was amazing. Lifetime opportunity. And this isn't my last trip here. I'm going to come back. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. I want to say a huge thank you to this man right here for joining me on this journey. It wouldn't have been the same at all without you. And I honestly, I would not have wanted to do it if you weren't here. So thank you. I appreciate that, dude. You can go find Yia Vang right here on his Instagram. Follow him in his fun culinary pursuits, adventures, and media exploits and beyond. Otherwise, guys, that is it for this one. Signing out from Laos. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. I saw a turkey over dude, there. Dude, there's a, like a I legit turkey. We could cook that turkey. Yeah. Thanksgiving. I bet over firewood. In Southeast Asia. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>